Hey everybody, welcome back to another Diecast review. This is Brad Keselowski's 2020 Coca-Cola 600 race win. This is his, I believe, third or fourth crown jewel off the list. Um, usually, I don't know what the actual... I think Fontana was considered a crown jewel, but that's obviously not true anymore. Um, I think... I, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure the crown jewels are the Darlington Southern 500, the Indy uh, the Brickyard 400, the Daytona 500 is number three, um, the Coke 600 is number four, and number five is the Bristol Night Race, in my opinion, but it just that also just kind of seems like the one everybody wants to win. So those would be the five crown jewels, in my opinion. He's got four of the five now, and um, yeah, the last thing left for him to get, go get that uh, Daytona 500. Uh, so anyway, it comes with three things. Uh, it comes with a Elite card, which just basically says that it is a standard finish Elite diecast. whoop de doo no serial number, nothing like that, which is fine. It just It's kind of a card that's completely useless, so anyone that freaks out and won't buy a card just because it's missing the card, I'm sorry, that makes no sense. Um, there you see the winner card, or the winner sticker there, the black and white with the kind of fade going. And then here we go, Brad Keselowski, Coca-Cola 600 race win. Uh, four hours and 30 minutes. Uh, it's a long race, so that's not surprising. Uh, he started ninth, 4.05 laps for 6.07 miles. 6.07 miles. Sorry, I know they want to try and do the green-white checkered finish thing, but it's the Coca-Cola 600. Like, I I don't know. I get it. It's kind of gimmicky. I, I feel like if you're going to do a restart within 10 laps, like, like World of Outlaws, inside of 10 laps to go, you start single file, just so that way they don't shake up the entire running order so badly, but... You know, it's more about the show in NASCAR than the integrity of the race, if you haven't already noticed, <laughs> at least compared to other racing series. Uh, anyway, eight cautions for 52 laps, and he led 21 laps, won by two or .293 seconds. Johnson was second, ca crossing the line. He was DQ'd after that, and Elliott had roared back up to third. Um, this was the unfortunate, for at least us Elliott fans, um, race where the caution came out with three to go, and it looked like Chase was going to get his first crown jewel. But um, literally kind of felt like it got robbed from him, especially after what happened at uh, Darlington. So unfortunately, it's, um, it was it was a mid-season slump, but you know what? We'll take the championship, right? Um, here's our Elite box here. You can see we got the Elite Chrome logo. It's the same as the last couple years. Nothing really changed there. Uh, quantity of, one, uh, of 454 total for the Charlotte win. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, cool thing about this car is it is the last of the Miller Lite cars, at least as far as we know. This was the only race they sponsored this year, and he did happen to get a win in the car. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the die cast now. This car is awesome. So down on the left side, you can see we got some dirt on the very, very front of the car here. It is nice. Anytime there's a white car, they do tend to show the dirt a little bit better. Uh, there you see the American flag thing with the blue stars. I think that's foam. Hmm. There's little specks all over it. After my Elliot came in, uh, if you guys didn't see the video yesterday, so check that one out. But the Elliot came in with some defects on it. This one's getting me a little nervous because I'm seeing little flaky things. There's, I think, I hope that's rubber stuff on the on the windshield, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, anyway, down the rest of the left side, you can see we got the NASCAR Heat logos. We got Cup Series. Um, again, American flag going. Uh, Wabash discount. There's Miller Lite, and then you can see the burnout marks around the rear tires here. Snap on Alliance, and then the ethanol ring. We do have the taller spoiler, so it is the correct spoiler, uh, which I think is all of them on the Fords. Um, it was Toyota and Chevy that they were going to be less accurate on, but the Elliott one had the tall spoiler, so fingers crossed that means they're all going to do that. Uh, you can see on the rear bumper just some rubber and beat up, you know, not beat up, not dented, but just, you know, some race markings there. Uh, we got the Mustang taillights. You get the fuel cell inside the rear as well um, in there. We got Miller Lite. On to the right side, you can see a little bit of dirt on this right rear corner. Miller Lite. You can see down around this is where you kind of get to see a little bit more build up is right in front of the right rear. A little marker there on there as well. Black around the skirt uh, so it doesn't burn or look like it gets burned by the time the race is over. Um, you know, not too much dirt as you get towards the front. NASCAR Cup Series, NASCAR Heat Logos, Brad Keselowski up there. This was no winter sticker on here either. I guess they weren't doing that in Victory Lane. Uh, to the very front of the car, you can see a little bit of tape on the nose. You can see all the rubber buildup on the very right front corner of the car. That was kind of a tendency of these cars this year that they had a lot of this buildup on the front of the car. You can see on the very, very hood of the car, a lot more of that uh, buildup and dirt up there. We got Miller Lite on the hood, Pennzoil and Ford. 
and then um, the left front's definitely not quite as uh, as built up as the as the right front is. The right front is 100% more built up, but overall the dirt does show pretty well because it is on a white car. Uh, roof flaps do pop open on the roof there. You got number two and the st uh, stars on each side. Keselowski on the windshield banner there. Uh, underneath the car, we do have DIN number 224, working rear suspension, working front suspension, and then we have the posable wheels and the engine detail up in there as well. We'll go ahead and pop the hood open, get a look underneath, and uh, see what we can see. Ooh, that was a little bit of a struggle. I couldn't quite get that to pop open. It's a good problem to have. I tend to prefer it if uh, the hood is a little bit of a pain in the butt. There, it popped right open. All right, so in there, we do have a blue valve cover. We got Miller Lite, powered by Ford, under the hood. Blue valve covers, uh, air filter there, and then there's a, a pink element down below. I'm not sure what that, that more pink element down there is. You can kind of see it from this angle. Um, it's just kind of sitting down in there. Uh, but we do have the radiator up front. We've got uh, all those um, valve covers. Again, we're missing the wires that go up in there, so it's unfortunate we don't have that. But... Um, Hey, I've, I've dug about this deep into my car just recently getting it all fixed up, so it's not all that uh, abnormal. Uh, you got Sar Special Sergeant Reap on the windshield banner uh, for Memorial Day. And then uh, I forgot to mention, we also do have the Honor and Remember tires uh, or Salute to Service type tire, you know, whatever they call them. But we do have the special tires on this car as well. Um, overall... I think if you're going to get a Brad Keselowski win from this year, this one or the Bristol are going to be the top two. I think they're going to look the best. They're going to have the most race damage. They're going to look, you know, be overall the better options. After that <clears throat> is what I would look at, like, Richmond or Loudoun or whatever other track. I think he has four wins on the year. Um, but I would definitely look at those next. But I think between this one and his Bristol are going to be his two best ones. So um, I wouldn't let this one sit too long. Um, it could be a tough one to find. It's a Crown Jewel race, number one. Patriotic car, number two. And it is the last of the Miller Lite sponsors, number three. All three of those reasons is, a re is just little things that could cause this car to dry up and be hard to find. So I definitely would pick it up um, if I were you and you were thinking about it because this might be one that, you know, disappears and becomes harder to find. It's just like... Uh, this one here, you know, it was did nothing special. Patriotic car, Jimmy Johnson, nothing crazy, but it's a Coke 600. It's a patriotic car, dried up, disappeared, and I can't find them. And that's very typical with any of our Coke 600 cars, frankly. Um, you know, let's just go back through the list. Martin Truex Jr. That one's pretty tough to find already. Um, Kyle Busch, 2018, a little tough to find. Austin Dillon's was okay. It's out there. It's definitely not like. You know, people aren't giving them away like some of them. Um, the year before that, Truex 2016. Well, that's a grail. Good luck finding those now. 2015, they didn't make. 2014, that one I just showed you. Also kind of a grail. Hard to find. 2013, Kevin Harvick. That's a, a hard one to find. 2012, Casey Kane. You know, that another one that's way above its market value. 2011, Kevin Harvick's above market value. You know, my, my point is... Definitely pick these Coke 600 cars up because it just seems like they never go down. They're always going up, so this is the cheapest you're going to find it. Anyway, that'll wrap up the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you've picked this one up. And uh, let me know, please, let me know in the comments right now or, you know, tag it or whatever. But let me know if these white specs are supposed to be there or if I've got some type of weird buildup and goofy stuff on this car. Because um, if I do, I'm already sending the Chase Elliott back. I don't want to have to send another one back, but I've got a few, there's a few little spots kind of all over here, and I'm hoping it's not defective, but uh, it's Lionel, so I don't hold my breath, but uh, again, let me know if yours, if you got this car, let me know if yours has these markings on it as well, so I can uh, make the decision there, so uh, anyway, thank you all for watching, hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next Diecast Review.